A detective who worked on researching an explosive Fox News story is today taking the channel to court, alleging they defamed him in a deliberate effort to help Donald Trump deny Russia was behind the election hack. Now, all these at this point are just claims they need to be proven. He says he has evidence, including texts and voicemails. But first, the context. DNC staffer Seth Rich was murdered in July 2016. Police say it was likely from a botched robbery. In May, though, Fox News touted a supposed break in the case. What you're about to see is a story they have not proven, which fell apart after airing, and which Fox has partially retracted. Another Fox News alert, a huge bombshell in the murder of this D.C. DNC staffer. An investigator now says Seth Rich was in contact with WikiLeaks before he was murdered. So if that is true, and we don't know yet, uh, looks like Russia didn't give it to WikiLeaks. Right. Well, it was Let's... Seth Rich, perhaps. Perhaps. Fox News claiming maybe Russia didn't do the hacking, which would undermine the felony at the heart of Mueller's investigation and perhaps exonerate President Trump. But they didn't have evidence for that bizarre claim, and this lawsuit drives another nail in that coffin because the investigator, who we're about to hear from, who worked on the case, says Fox News made up the few false quotes they had for the story, alleging Wheeler's reputation destroyed by defendants' decision to defame him. And that's not all. Wheeler also says the White House was in on all this, and he has the evidence to prove it. Wheeler saying a key volunteer Fox investigator left him a voicemail saying, quote, we have the full attention of the White House on this. Tomorrow, let's close this deal, whatever we've got to do. And texting, quote, not to add any more pressure, but the president just read the article. He wants the article out immediately. It's now all up to you, end quote. Wheeler argues that was true, and the White House was involved in the retracted story. But if this was not true, well, that would help the White House, but not Fox News, if their volunteer investigator was lying while teeing up the story, or if the investor in all of this was lying. Now, that is one side of the case. Fox is fighting this case today and denying all of these allegations, saying, quote, the accusation that FoxNews.com published the story to help detract from coverage of Russia collusion is erroneous. The retraction of this story still being investigated internally, and we have no evidence that Rod Wheeler was misquoted. And the White House said this today. Did the president know about the story pre-publication, and did he have an influence on the way the story was written? The president had no knowledge of the story, and it's completely untrue that here the White House involvement in the story. I want to be clear with you as we proceed. There are two sides to this story. We here at The Beat have invited the White House on this show to elaborate an open invitation this week. Tonight, we have another side of the story. Rod Wheeler, the plaintiff in this case, and Douglas Wigdor, Rod Wheeler's attorney. Rod, what are you claiming, and when did this entire incident change for you? Because initially, you were voluntarily involved. That's right. Well, I was asked to get involved in conducting an investigation, a murder investigation of Seth Rich, and that's why I got involved, so I could try to find out who killed this guy. Uh, during the course of my investigation, there was a lot of things that came up. Uh, there was a lot of suspicious uh, information that I was learning as far as possibly even the DNC being involved to some degree. I don't know. But what I decided to do was to, you know, take all of the information I got and give it to the police department like you should do in any case and go from there. But halfway through the investigation and then up until the point in which this article was released by Fox, there were these quotes in there from me supposedly saying that I I knew for a fact that uh, Seth Rich, the decedent, had been in contact with WikiLeaks emailing them emails. Right. Well, let's that pause. was let's not pause. true. Fox News reporting you as the source right. linking the DNC staffer to this hacking. Right. You're the saying reporter. at the time that was false. Right. The reporter from Fox News, Malia Zimmerman, she wrote that story. I immediately challenged her and I said, Malia, that's just simply not true. You and I both know this isn't true. And she said, well, her bosses told her to leave those quotes in there. And I said, why would you leave something in an article that you know is not true? And that's why we're here today. Why do you think, as you allege, they made up quotes from you? 
Well, I think, uh, well, I know for a fact that Ed Butowski, who was the individual that was funding my investigation, he had been in contact with people from the White House, and he was the one that was pushing this Russian hacking narrative, by the way, that I didn't know a whole lot about because I wasn't, you know, trying to debunk a narrative or support a narrative. I was trying to find a murderer. Um, I do know that, and Ed even admitted himself. And then I think the bottom line with all of this, Ari, is the fact that the reporter herself from Fox News, she even admitted admitted that she lied and put those quotes in there. I mean, she admitted that, but at the same time to this day, they have not retracted that. As a result of those quotes and her story, it's then damaged my credibility and my integrity. Let's look at Fox News uh, when you did go on with Hannity. There was a, a federal investigator that was involved on the inside of the case, a person that's very credible. He said he laid eyes on the computer and he laid eyes on the case file. When you look at that with the totality of everything else that I found in this case, it's very consistent for a person with my experience to begin to think, well, perhaps there were some email communications between Seth and WikiLeaks. If you were so concerned at the time, why did you go on Fox News and make that claim? Well, I think that claim was true. Think about it. If this investigator, this FBI investigator that was developed by the Fox News person, if that person, what they're saying is true, coupled with everything else that I had been finding in my investigation, then any investigator would say to themselves, well, maybe his death was a result of something related to his job. So you're so, saying, I just want to be clear, you're saying at that moment you were telling the truth because you were relying on misinformation? So in your mind, you exactly, just... Exactly. I was relying on And then on when did you change your mind? Well, I never actually changed my mind. See, I never backtracked anything because I actually never made those statements, those quotes in the first place. The day after that story was released is immediately I confronted that reporter and I told her, you need to take these things out of the article. She never did that. So, so I mean, really the difference between what you just played and what, what was in the May 16th article is that in the clip, he's talking about a source that allegedly existed. We don't even know if this source existed. This is what Ed Butowski and Malia Zimmerman said. When they did the May 16th article, they attributed everything to Rod having seen these emails, and he never saw the emails. And as he said, both Malia Zimmerman and Ed Butowski both admitted that these quotes um, right. Were, weren't right. In fact, Ed Butowski said, you know what? These, these are words that you never said, but you're going to win an award for having said right. these I mean, the words best, you never the said. The best legal defamation point here is whatever happened, we're now at a place where everyone, including Fox News, has said part of this was wrong. Then you have the other part of your complaint, which is this documentary evidence and text that the president of the United States was personally involved in reviewing this story before it was published and pushing it out. When did you learn about that and why do you believe that to be the case? Right, I learned about that from Ed Butowski. He's the one that sent me an email, which I've you know, shown, I mean, I'll show the emails and I have shown them and voicemails where he said the president has reviewed the story. This is the story that the reporter was going to release. This is before the story was released. This is what he sent to me. The president has reviewed this story and wants it out there. Wow, so hold on. Now this comes from Ed Butowski. Right, what did you think when you got that text? Well, first of all, I'm thinking, why would the president have to review a story pertaining to a debt to the murder of a guy in D.C.? Why would the president even be involved in this? But at that point, Ari, it was rather obvious to me that they actually lured me into this investigation, they meaning this Fox News reporter and Ed Butowski, to substantiate this Russian narrative thing or to debunk that when, in fact, they told me that I was really getting involved just to solve a murder. So you're, All I want them to do is to correct the record. Right, your tell theory, the truth. Your th I mean, this is why this is a weird one, but, but you have some texts here that make it more than a theory. Your argument is and, that they pulled you in to use you in part of this investigation and that Fox News and the White House were advanced planning it. And I want to read from one of the uh, emails that, that you have in your complaint. Uh, basically showing the plan in advance, quote, one of the big conclusions that the Fox uh, volunteer here said we need to draw from this is that the Russians did not hack our computer systems and steal emails, and there was no collusion like Trump with the Russians. Why is that important, and what did you think then if you learned that that was part of the goal, not 
solving the murder, quote unquote. Right. Why would they have me then be investigating this thing as a murder when, in fact, their alternative motive was to debunk a Russian hacking narrative, which, you know, which was unfair to me? Because as a result of that story, like I said, it killed my credibility. It made it seem like I was backtracking on something. But if you think about it, I never backtracked because I never said those quotes. And, and Douglas, I want to ask you a question yeah. with the time we have. Sure. The arguments just made will be tested in court for their yeah. veracity sure. based on whether they were lying to you, lying to the public, and whether that meets uh, a defamation standard. You also, though, in this complaint have these explosive allegations about the White House. You don't need those to win your case, though, do you? Why are they in there? We don't need them, but it's, it, it's the backdrop for why they defamed Rod. And, you know, it's really interesting because you read the statement by Fox. They say that our claims are erroneous, but then they go on to say that they're still investigating it. So how could they already conclude that they're erroneous if they're still going through an investigation? You know, we're going to take discovery in this case. We're going to see the emails or texts or phone calls or visits to the White House between Ed Butowski and, and President Trump. Trump and other people in the White House. And we're going to get even more information in this case. And what's really amazing, last point, is that the general counsel of 21st Century Fox, Gerson Zweifak, was in England trying to convince the regulators in England that they should be able to purchase Sky and that they met the broadcasting standards by implementing new policies the day before this article came out. Hmm. Rod, final question. Is there anything you want to say to President Trump? who is named in your suit uh, with regard to reviewing this article. Well, and number two, anything you want to say uh, to Mr. Rich's family? Well, you know, I've already expressed my uh, apologies to the Rich family that this thing even went in the direction that it did. And the only thing I would say to the president and to the Democratic Party is to butt out of police investigations and let the police department conduct their own homicide investigations. Because I don't think we would be here today if the DNC would not have been involved to some degree with uh, this investigation with the D.C. Police Department. How was the DNC involved with the police department? Well, you know, I said before on a Fox show that when I, during my investigation, when I first reached out to the police department, Donna Brazil was the one that contacted the Rich family wanting to know why I was snooping around. Why would Donna Brazil even be involved in this situation if this is just a street murder? So I do think the DNC need to butt out of this police investigation and Ed Butowski and the Republican Party as well. You know, I don't know for a fact, Ari, and I know we don't have much time. I don't know for a fact if President Trump even knew about all of these things going on. But if I was to base it off of what Ed Butowski said, then I would say, yes, he did. I don't know that for a fact, but I think politicians need to butt out of police work and let cops do their jobs. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.